OK, we've hit the noon hour, so it uh, gives me pleasure to kick us off today uh, with the Friday, May 14th edition of the COVID situation report um, for Peterborough Public Health. Uh, my name is Brittany Cadence. I'm the communications manager here, and uh, we're very pleased to have with us uh, we're very pleased to have with us uh, several members of the of our elected officials and uh, media and other partners. So thank you for joining us. So as we enjoy this beautiful sunny day out there, and I do hope people are soaking up some of those beautiful, beautiful warm uh, breezes out there. Uh, let's let's begin. Um, we respectfully acknowledge that Peterborough Public Health is located on the Treaty 20 Michisagic territory and in the traditional territory of the Michisagic and Chippewa nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island First Nations. Peterborough Public Health respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty's First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We are all treaty people. Okay, so now I will invite uh, our Board of Health Chair, Mayor Andy Mitchell, to uh, start us off with some opening remarks. Please go ahead, Andy. Thanks, Brittany. Yesterday, the government extended the stay at home order for two additional weeks. The Board of Health fully supports this decision and believes it will contribute to a more expeditious return to normal. As we move through the, as we move through the next three weeks, I believe it will be important for the government to undertake three initiatives. First, to set out parameters that we need to achieve in order for the that we need to achieve so that the order can be lifted or modified. This includes detailing goals such as daily new cases, transmission rates, test positivity rates, hospitalization, and ICU capacity. Adhering to public health measures will be easier if we have specific goals to work towards. Second is to consider what lower risk outdoor activities can be permitted. Everyone is exhausted and needs the opportunity to get out of the house and engage in play and recreation. Surely we can allow sports, exercise, and similar activities that can be done in small numbers, allow for physical distancing, and can be done wearing a mask where necessary. Third, we need to encourage people to get vaccinated, in part by outlining what additional activities vaccinated individuals will be able to do. Medical experts and government officials need to provide guidelines of what a fully vaccinated person can do with another fully vaccinated person. Hug, eat together, share a visit with a parent in long-term care. We all want June 2nd to, the, to be the end of the lockdown and the beginning of a slow and measured return to normalcy. Setting goals, allowing for low risk outdoor activities, and outlining the tangible benefits of vaccination will hasten a successful return to social, economic, and cultural activity. Be well, stay safe, and in all things, be kind. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mayor Mitchell. Okay, so now to uh, lead us through the latest statistics, we have uh, Dr. Rosanna Salvatera, our Medical Officer of Health. Please go ahead, Dr. Salvatera. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, so I'll start with the situational update for today. As of 4.30 p.m. yesterday, our active count jumped again to 89 cases, 24 more cases than we reported on Tuesday. We continue to see the variants of concern as our dominant strain in circulation. With the increase in the uh, in these cases comes the additional increase in high risk contacts, which now stand at 285 or 58 more than three days ago. The number of total local deaths remains at 17 from last Tuesday. Next slide, please. You can see here with our uh, weekly reported cases that we're up to 45 already this week. Uh, so certainly I don't expect 
we're going to see that uh, sharp decline that we would have uh, hoped for at this point in the uh, stay at home order. Next slide. As far as our active outbreaks, I have some good news not reflected here on this slide, but as of 30 minutes ago, we have declared another one of our local outbreaks over. Uh, so that brings us down to three. Next slide, please. We're showing you here the incidence rates uh, of Peterborough in the purple and our neighboring uh, public health units. So you'll see, starting from the right of the slide, you can see that our weekly uh, incidence rate has uh, increased uh, a bit to 245 cases uh, this week. It may not be that detectable given the scale, but uh, but that's the, that's what you are looking at. Our rate is fairly consistent with the rates reported by HKPR and Hastings Prince Edward, uh, but you'll see uh, Durham's rate uh, above us, much higher than ours, but thankfully it too is trending downwards, which is a hopeful sign. Next, I'll review our latest uh, wastewater uh, surveillance and again just to uh, to point out follow the green line that's the normalized results and you can see that we had that uh, increase last week uh, going into last weekend and you can see a, a, a steep decline this week uh, which is uh, which does uh, make us uh, hopeful and in general when we look back to about March uh, sorry April 15th, uh, we can see uh, a, a bit of a decline. And uh, again, uh, hoping that this does uh, bode well for future days and fewer cases here in Peterborough. I'll move on to vaccination. And uh, since last Thursday, we've vaccinated a total of 66,045 uh, people. That's uh, 5,600 more than last week. Of this, uh, the uh, 60,524 are Peterborough residents who've received at least their first dose, which means that when we look at the pie chart there to the right, uh, and we look at that orange piece, uh, it's showing that 49.3% of our eligible population has now had one vaccine. That's just shy of 50%. And uh, I'm feeling confident that we will be able to achieve the provincial target of 65% by the end of the month. And this is quite impressive uh, considering the limited vaccine supply we've had over the past several weeks. So thank you, Peterborough, for stepping up and taking advantage of the vaccine. Uh, in the past week alone, we've increased the vaccination rate by almost 4% of the eligible population. The bar graph there to the left uh, provides the breakdown of vaccination levels by age group. Uh, it's good to see that now more than 85% of our residents who are 60 years of age or over have received at least one dose. So I'd like to begin my remarks today just by giving a, a shout out to all of our nurses as we celebrate National Nursing Week. We are blessed to have an incredible team of nurses who are not only out in the clinics giving those vaccinations that I just reported, but are doing the contact tracing, working with schools, caring for clients in our sexual health clinic, uh, working with new parents in our child health programs, and serving at the leadership table here at Peterborough Public Health uh, to guide us through this pandemic. We are also very grateful for the many retired nurses who have stepped up to help us with the local vaccination rollout. Please, please take a moment today to show our nurses some love as we honor their critical role in healthcare, in public health, both at this time and when we are not in a public health emergency. 
With the recent provincial announcement pausing the administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine, I recognize that our close to 7,000 local residents who received their first dose are likely uh, having many questions. Uh, we are awaiting ministry guidance on how best to address second doses for this group. Um, but I think we'll need another week or two uh, before there may be some firm decisions that we can share. Uh, there are promising trials underway indicating that the mixing of vaccine types uh, may offer even stronger protection. Uh, and the National Advisory Committee on Immunization will be providing its expert opinion on this soon. Regarding second doses in general, we all have, uh, we've been receiving many inquiries here at Peterborough Public Health. Uh, the provincial booking system will be updated to assist you with this, uh, but we ask for patience as we are continuing to focus on first doses here. We have a bit of catching up to do. Uh, in the meantime, happy to announce that PRHC will begin to provide second doses to healthcare workers who are in that highest risk group. Uh, if you go back to phase one, you can see who they are. They will start getting second doses next week at PRHC. We've had good news regarding the expansion, uh, the increased authorization for the use of Pfizer vaccine in 12 to 17 year olds. We will be working with our local school board partners on a plan to start vaccinating adolescents next month. So that'll be in June. In the meantime, I encourage parents and youth to sign up uh, using our Notify Me program on our website uh, so that we can send you details about local vaccination clinics for this age band once our plans are in place, and that might be as soon as next week. As Mayor Mitchell noted off the top, the stay-at-home order has been extended until June 2nd. I support this decision as we need a little more time to bring our cases under control and to increase the percentage of our population that has some protection with immunization before we open up. I want this lockdown to be our last. Uh, as the weather continues to improve as well, I'm hoping to see more outdoor recreational activities safely open up. Extending the stay at home order uh, is especially important for regions like ours with many seasonal properties and seasonal visitors, especially on a long weekend. I know it'll be very disappointing for those who cannot use their cottage except to perform urgent maintenance. And you can count me in as one of those disappointed people. But then again, I won't be food for the black flies next weekend. I do appreciate the Premier's advance notice so that communities like ours know what to expect heading into a long weekend. So 15 months into this pandemic, I understand that people are getting weary. I also understand the toll, the sacrifice uh, that this pandemic has meant for our business community. Um, but this is not the time to give up we are on the verge of getting to the other side of this. And I am counting on the cooperation and the goodwill of everyone here in Peterborough to help bring this third wave to an end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Salvatera. Okay, lots of information there. Uh, we now will um, hear from our elected officials and I see joining us by phone, I believe, is uh, MP Monsef and uh, we also have with us um, Mayor Diane Tarian. So let's start with um, uh, MP Monsef. Uh, greetings and please go ahead. Thank you so much, Brittany. Hello, colleagues. Bonjour, Anin. Salam alaikum. I join you from 
my home on Mississauga and Anishinaabe territory, and I'll begin as always with profound gratitude to Dr. Salvatera, to Chair Mitchell, to the entire team at Public Health and those on the front lines of the fight against COVID. I'll focus my remarks on vaccines and uh, nursing week. Uh, so far, more than 20.5 million vaccines have been distributed to provinces and territories, and over 17.2 million shots have been administered. Here in Ontario, 81.4% of the shots delivered have been administered, with 1,315,654 doses uh, to be uh, administered in the near future. 690 Indigenous communities have vaccinations underway across the country, with 41.6% of Canadians have received, ha having received at least one dose. Next week, up to 3.7 million doses will be distributed to provinces. This is the largest amount to date in a single week, which includes 60, 655,000 doses of AstraZeneca. Now that our vaccination campaign is in ramp up stage, as we see supplies continue to increase, we're also seeing an increase in daily doses administered. And let me take this opportunity to thank every immunizer, volunteer and otherwise, and everybody who's stepping up to, to roll up their sleeves and get those shots in the arm. Because over the past week, Canada has averaged nearly 334,000 doses administered every single day. This put, puts us here in Canada in top three among G20 countries in both daily doses administered per capita over the past week and total doses administered per capita. So keep up the great work, Team Canada. And these are great numbers. They show tremendous progress we're making with vaccine rollout. But we're not out of the woods yet. The lockdown for another two weeks will be difficult. Without a doubt, it'll be difficult. But hang in there, folks. The end is close, and we see it. We feel it. And let me take this opportunity to thank every single person, doctors, healthcare providers, volunteers, essential workers, nurses, who are working so hard to make this happen. And, you know, it's it's an important week around the world and here in Canada with, with Nursing Week, more than 90% of nurses are women, whether they're immunizing, whether in our schools, whether they're providing sexual health and gender-based violence support, whether they're supporting new parents, as Dr. Salvatera said, contact tracing. Uh, this is a noble profession and your work is essential and it's been particularly difficult. We thank you. We send you lots of love. And we particularly thank your families for sharing you with us. I hope in your, for your sake, in your name, we all work hard to limit the spread, to get those vaccines, and to put this difficult chapter behind us. Stay safe, everyone, and have a great weekend. Thank you very, very much, uh, MP Monsef. Great to have you join us today. Okay, let's uh, hear from uh, Mayor Terrian. Uh, and if your camera's working, I'm happy to put you up on screen. Otherwise, we can just uh, just hear your voice. I think it is working. Thank you. I don't have too much to add that hasn't been said. Um, the sun's out, so that's you know helpful. We are um, you know the news yesterday was I know disappointing for a lot of people, but this is what we have to do to get out of this. So it's a couple more weeks. Um, we're gonna get through it together, continue to support one another. And um, if you're eligible for a vaccine, um, get one. If you know somebody that is, I know I've had a couple of friends texting me about appointments. So the word is getting out and people are, um, are sharing that, which is great. It's one step closer to getting us back to normalcy. Um, so that's it for me today. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thanks so much for joining us today, uh, Mayor Terrian. All right, so now we will get a chance to hear from our uh, media colleagues. Um, and uh, I'd also uh, just like to acknowledge we have, uh, in addition to Dr. Salvatera available for questions, we have some representatives from our uh, partners in enforcement, uh, both uh, representatives from uh, Peterborough Police Service, so Chief Gilbert is here, and Inspector Lyons, as well as uh, from the Ontario Provincial Police, we have Constable uh, Joe Ayat here today.
Uh, so let's start with uh, Joelle Kovach. You sent us some questions in advance, Joelle, uh, from the Peterborough Examiner. So if you have questions for our speakers, please go ahead. Sorry about that. Yes, a little pause there. Um, thank you so much. I was wondering, um, it's a question both for Dr. Salvatera and for Inspector Lyons, whoever would like to answer first. I was wondering whether there's been any complaints about uh, church services. I understand that there was um, a gathering at Nichols Oval, but I wonder if there's been any indoor or outdoor services that have been um, reported to public health or to police. Uh, I can start, Joelle. Uh, so uh, we have received complaints uh, against uh, three different places of worship uh, and all have been investigated, including uh, site visits where necessary. Uh, none have resulted in charges or further enforcement. So overall, I'd say that this sector has been extremely cooperative uh, and compliant, uh, respecting the importance of public health measures and eager to protect their congregation and the community and at large uh, in order to be a, uh, able to continue to offer services and ceremonies. Um, with, with, I'd say, one exception, uh, and I would say that that has been the Hill City Baptist Church. Uh, last year, we received several complaints regarding non-compliance uh, of public health measures uh, at this particular uh, place of worship. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, that led to quite a long history uh, with them throughout the fall and, and into the winter. Uh, the church disregarded and disputed public health measures required for the control of COVID-19. Uh, we did pay a visit to the church. Uh, I went myself uh, and we observed that the majority of congregants were removing their masks upon entry uh, into the gymnasium where the service was being held. So uh, we did meet We did meet with Pastor uh, Klusterman, and uh, he made it very clear to us that he had no intention in complying with uh, the provincial requirement for masking. Uh, and we were actually preparing to take additional enforcement actions. Uh, however, it wasn't required as the church vacated uh, the building uh, that they were leasing on December the 17th. So we haven't heard from the pastor since then uh, until uh, we learned that uh, he had been charged last weekend by the police. Okay. Um, there are some uh, on their Facebook page, some videos from the last several Sundays that show services but I, I they appear to be indoors is are, are is is there continued um uh defiance of the the stay home orders or are they are there not i can't tell whether well i i would not be surprised if this is if this was the case uh we we lost sight of them uh in december when they uh left the uh, village on argyle where they had been renting the space Okay, I was going to ask about the location. That was my next question. Okay. Um, they're also advertising outdoor services. They're saying come at 10.30 a.m. and bring a lawn chair. Is that is that something that's allowed right now or not? Maybe that's uh, an outdated ad, though. Uh, well, currently, during this uh, uh, emergency and lockdown, the there is a provision for uh, religious ceremonies uh, with a maximum of 10 allowed for the ceremony and no uh, no uh, socialization uh, as well, though. OK, I understand much better. All right. Um, is uh, you mentioned one of the three churches. Can is there a reason why the others are uh, can't can't be disclosed as we, well, we certainly had uh, no problem working with those congregations. They were uh, very uh, receptive 
to our guidance. And, um, and as I said, on the whole, we have found the sector to be very, uh, very compliant and very concerned about the well-being of their congregation and the community at large. All right, so you went yourself to this church. Was there a number of people gathered indoors? And what did you see when you got there? You said they were taking off their masks? Yes, so this was back in December and I attended as well as one of my staff. Uh, and uh, at that point, uh, gatherings were allowed. Uh, physical distancing had to be uh, in place. Uh, and for the most part that was, but it was very apparent that uh, masking was uh, not being uh, enforced uh, and there were a variety of other public health measures that were not being uh, uh, were not being uh, enacted. Okay, but they did comply. No, they, they did not comply. They, they did not, but they did not face a charge either. What I'm sure you mentioned why not. I'm we were right. preparing actually to issue a section 22 order. Uh, but in the why, in the meantime, we uh, were uh, we received confirmation from the landlord that they were vacating the property, so it wasn't required. Okay, that's really helpful. Okay, I had asked um, police as well, but it sounds like you've covered that. I, I don't imagine. Well, I don't know if the police have anything they'd like to add from last Saturday. Oh, maybe they would. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Salvatera. Just regarding that, um, so obviously, um, now that it's on our radar, we'll definitely be um, looking for uh, any of that non-compliance uh, as it relates to the orders uh, now. Um, so moving forward, we will definitely be watching for and monitoring that particular situation uh, that occurred up at Nichols Oval. Um, and unfortunately, I think sometimes um, that may be a transient situation where it may not be uh, in place at the same place all the time, but whatever that uh, may be, we will definitely do our best to follow up with it and, and follow up accordingly. Okay, one follow up question. I, I did see online that uh, there was talk of perhaps moving the protests around to various locations. One of them, you know, sometimes even on private property. Do you have some, uh, so, like, obviously you're aware of this and are looking out for this. How does that uh, change things? It just means that we have to be uh, prepared for that um, and that we have to monitor it um, very closely and be aware of of uh, those uh, ever-changing situations, but um, it's it's really just a matter of, of making sure that we're following up and doing our due diligence and uh, doing the best we can to try and, and deal with those situations as they come. Okay, that's really helpful. Thanks. I'll leave it to my colleagues now. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, uh, Joelle. Uh, okay, well, let's hear from Reg Watson from the examiner in case there's any other questions uh, from from them. Do you have any questions, uh, Reg? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, okay, great. Uh, then Taylor Clysdale, uh, you're joining us from Peterborough this week. Nice to have you here. Uh, do you have questions for our speakers today? Uh, yes, I do actually, thank you. Um, so just in regards to, uh, this is a question for Dr. Salpera. Um, you know, uh, vaccine saturation in the community, fantastic news to hear that we're almost at the 50% mark. Um, what's What efforts are being made right now in terms of outreach for um, those hesitant to uh, accept the vaccine? Um, just reading a lot of stories about uh, in the states where they're struggling with that. So just wondering, you know, what efforts we're making locally well, we, we anticipate we'll run into more vaccine hesitancy at some point, Taylor. Right now, 
that hasn't been the case. We have more, more hunger for vaccine than, than we have supply. However, what we've done, uh, we know that certain groups um, tend to be more um, hesitant. Uh, so for example, when it comes to uh, our Indigenous community and our First Nations, we've worked very closely with their leadership and their representatives and have done our best to make the, uh, to, to offer the vaccines in a place that's culturally safe uh, for them. Uh, so, uh, so I think that has in increased the vaccine uptake for some of our um, other groups that might be more hesitant, people who are uh, homeless or street engaged, uh, we've taken the vaccine to them. So we did go, we held a, a drop in at the new Brock Street uh, Mission building even before it was, uh, uh, it was occupied in a fresh, beautiful new space. We're continuing to plan with partners in the community for how to reach, uh, how to provide low barrier vaccine access to uh, to that community that is at high risk and may not, you know, that would not make an appointment. So we're, we're combining a lot of strategies. For example, we are going out to housebound patients. We're, we're drawing up the Moderna vaccine in, in single syringes. And we are driving the vaccine out to housebound patients who might not otherwise come for vaccination. So it really depends on the population. I anticipate that as we get into the youth group, that we may uh, need to come up with some strategies to address any hesitancy we find there. Um, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, Trent is holding its first vaccine clinic today to reach uh, young people there who might be essential workers. Uh, so, so we're using we, we're using a variety of strategies, really depending on which population we're trying to reach. All right, that's perfect. Uh, the only other question I have was just in relation to uh, yesterday's news about the extension of the stay at home order. Um, mm -hmm. I'm people are expressing, you know, frustration, exhaustion with the current situation. Um, are you worried that there may be uh, further cases of lack of compliance with the stay at home order as the, the situation drags on into June? I, I think we're already dealing with that. You know, we, we see it when, when we have a case and we investigate and we find out, uh, you know, we ask about contacts and we learn that people are socializing, uh, they're letting down their guard, maybe because they've had a dose of vaccine and, and they're feeling a little more comfortable uh, or they're just getting tired of, of, of not seeing family and friends and, and they're going ahead with those indoor visits. So I understand that people are tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I would love to have my grandchildren come over. Um, it's right now, uh, though, you know, we have a little more time to go to try and, and uh, bring the numbers down so that we can open up uh, and that we don't have to close up again. I mean, that's my, the fear. Uh, we don't want uh, a repeat of what happened in February when we opened up and then the numbers just turned right around and started to climb again. Uh, so I'd like to do the, get the job done well this time around and ensure that it's our last lockdown so that we can uh, open up and enjoy the summer. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Salvatore. I appreciate it. That's it for me. OK, great. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, OK, I see Donelda Frazier is joining us from the Havelock Rail out in Havelock. Do you have any questions for our speakers today? Thanks, Brittany. No questions. OK, not <clears throat> today. Great. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on to Paul Rellinger from Kawartha now. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, thanks so much, Brittany. Hi, Dr. Uh, Salvatore. A uh, couple things I just wanted to clarify and then a question if I could. Uh, you mentioned an outbreak just cleared. Which of the outbreaks was it? Do you know? It was one of the daycare outbreaks. Uh, okay. <laughs> was it? You don't know which one, though, right? Sorry, I I actually don't. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no. Fair enough. Uh, one of the daycare ones, and great. Um, 
I just want to, I think it was implied, but not actually said. The group that was at Nichols Oval last Saturday was the Hill City Baptist Church. I believe you need to ask the police that question. So I'll hand it over to uh, our police partner. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, would that be Inspector Lyons or Chief Gilbert? I yes. Um, so Paul, that information, um, it would. There's no definitive way to say that it's that particular church per se, but uh, suffice it to say that the individual that was there uh, is associated to that uh, that that church. So um, I can't definitively say that it is that church. I can just say that it, you know the pastor that was involved has been involved with that church in the past. Okay, so you don't want to say the pastor's name, so I'm assuming it's the pastor of Hill City Church you're talking about. Uh, correct. His name was mentioned prior, to, uh, which is Pastor Klusterman. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. I, I Sorry for the confusion there. Thank you for clearing that up. I appreciate it. Um, oh. uh, back to Dr. Salvatore, if I may. Um, there, uh, there was much talk a, a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't heard anything mentioned today, and I, and it's, I apologize, apologize if I missed it. Uh, we're expecting a pile of vaccines still on Monday, and and uh, I, I, I just wanted to get a, 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 there's a bunch of questions around that. How much, what kind, and what will the clinic situation look like as a result of this vaccine coming? So we are expecting a doubling of our Pfizer shipment on Monday. Uh, so it'll go up to over 7,000 doses per week. Uh, and what you will see next week is that we are going to be doubling our capacity at our uh, Evan Rood uh, clinic. So that's going to expand. And we will also be going back to a seven day per week uh, vaccine rollout. We've had to we've had to shut down on some days, and we haven't been able to run every day because we haven't had enough vaccines. So that all changes next week. We're back to seven days a week, uh, back to large clinics. We'll look again to see about clinics outside of Peterborough. Uh, we are in conversation with. Um, other partners to see about extending the hours of our of our clinics with more immunizers to, to help us. And we are in conversation with the city right now. We're making plans to move the vaccine clinic uh, over from the multipurpose rooms over to the Leon's ice pad, which will essentially triple what uh, the volume that we're currently able to do right now. So those are all uh, plans for, for how we will uh, use the vaccine that's coming and also meet the demand that's out there. Wow, wow, that's uh, big changes for sure. Um, and I'm assuming, which is never a good idea, but I'm assuming that the uh, many of the people who've been on the list waiting for a call, this will be this this will be their opportunity. They'll they'll get a call and say, hey, we're ready for you. Uh, well, we have people on email lists, if you're talking about the notify me, and so they definitely will get, uh, be notified. Um, I, I expect, Paul, that there are people out there right now who are eligible, uh, who maybe became eligible even yesterday because of their age, um, who have tried to book an appointment and have found that there weren't any available. We, we are putting appointments online as we can identify that we have enough vaccine. And I would just suggest that people keep uh, checking back, uh, going online, looking for those appointments and booking them when they become available. Okay, great. And sorry, and not to belabor the point, but that happens Monday with the vaccine arrival and you're expecting that, that amount or that momentum will continue into the week after and the week after or oh, from, from now on we expect uh, our goal for um, vaccines we're, we're expecting to be able to deliver 65,000 vaccines per month that's our current target once we uh, start getting enough supply Wow. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Dr. Salvatore. And I have one more question if Di uh, Mayor Tarion is still on the call. Okay, I believe she is. Yes. 
Oh, hi, Mayor uh, Tarion. Um, yeah, just a quick question to you regarding uh, this morning. The big news out of Toronto was that uh, uh, the city had canceled all its summer events and festivals and uh, kind of made a decision on that out of fairness to these groups who have to organize and get permits. Um, what's the timeline here for the city of Peterborough for any such decision uh, in that respect? That's a good question. I'll have to follow up with staff about that. Okay, fair enough. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, if uh, if unless Brendan's on, he might know. But if not, I'll follow up with you this afternoon. That'd be great. Um, thank you so much, Mayor Tarion, and thank you, Brittany. Great. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, and I, I see a hand up from Reg Watson. Uh, did you have a question for one of our speakers, Reg? Yes, I just wanted to. To, to, to Dr. Salvatera, just wanted to circle back to Pastor Klusterman. His argument, he's made a couple arguments publicly. One is that he believes that outdoor gatherings are not a high risk. His other argument is that um, freedom of religion and freedom of expression should supersede the Reopening Ontario Act. So I just wondered if you could comment on what, what your side of it what public health side of that is. Well, I'm going to have to say that I'm not prepared to get into an argument with the pastor through the media. Okay. Uh, I've made my case to him. He knows where I'm coming from. I know where he's coming from. And uh, we have a difference of opinion. Okay, fair enough. Unless uh, Joelle has a follow up on that. Okay, great. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Reg. So um, let's let's hear from uh, Matt Latour from our local radio station. So if you've got some questions, please go ahead. I've got uh, three questions, all of them for Dr. Salvatera. Um, I know Paul just asked the mayor about, uh, you know, outdoor events here in Peterborough during the summer. Have you been in touch at all with the DBIA about the planning of some of these and how they could be done safely if we are reopened in June? I believe, Matt, that those requests go to the city. And we certainly have provided the city with some recommendations about these events. So they are uh, to give them some guidance. Uh, and I know that my staff also um, works uh, very closely with city staff to support them uh, on uh, helping them to make decisions about these events. I know uh, Chair Andy Mitchell mentioned off the top that a way to encourage people to get vaccinated is to, by telling them what they can do after they're fully vaccinated. Uh, we've seen the CDC give out some more information lately that people don't need to socially distance or wear masks when they're fully vaccinated. Do you think that maybe that's the way we should be going sooner rather than later as more and more people are getting second doses? I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? Uh, so I know Andy Mitchell mentioned off the top uh, that a good way to encourage people to get vaccines is by telling them, you know, what they can do once they're fully vaccinated. Do you think we should be starting this messaging soon as more people start getting second doses? Well, I do think, uh, I mean, it, it may uh, it may help by giving people a, a sense of wh what can change for them. And I do know that we have been asking uh, the federal government to come out with some uh consistent messaging that we can use for this purpose. So I'm aware that the Public Health Agency of Canada is working on that kind of messaging. And I think we're all waiting to receive it so that we can use it. Perfect. And my last question, uh, yesterday, Premier Ford said uh, he'd like to see as normal of a July and August as possible, uh, but that wouldn't include things like sporting events or concerts. I know the OHL is supposed to be coming back in October. Do you see there being fans by then, you know, in the arena or do you think it's still way too far out to tell? Did you say by October? Yes. I, I'm hoping that uh, right now, just to give you an example, Matt, um, we're currently hoping to have all of the 12 to 17 year olds with their second doses by mid-August. 
So to give you an idea so that uh, certainly by October, by then, I would hope that everyone who has, uh, who needs an uh, immunization has had it, that they've all had their second doses and that we are looking at uh, people being fully immunized and uh, potentially being able to get the benefit of that herd immunity to allow us to normalize some of our daily routines and activities again. That's it for me. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Matt. OK, so that brings us to Jessica Nisnik uh, from Global News. So please go ahead, Jessica, if you've got some questions for our speakers today. Thanks, Brittany. I actually might be OK. I was really interested to talk about Monday, but uh, I think Dr. Salvatera covered that already, so I'm good. OK, thank you, Brittany. OK, thank you. All right, well, then I, I believe we have heard from all of our um, media guests today. So uh, I would just like to thank all of you for joining us and please uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, do stay safe out there uh, and we will see you back here on Tuesday. OK, thanks everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brittany. Thank you.